Yay! Yay! Hey, one interesting problem we can solve um, with conservation of momentum is called the ballistic pendulum. Uh, here's the idea that if I have some sort of a hanging mass um, and then I fire a little bullet into it, um, maybe mass little m, uh, what's going to happen, you can kind of play the movie in your head, what's going to happen is that pendulum, the mass is going to rise a little bit. It'll start swinging, right? Um, so the idea is that by measuring that angle, which might be pretty easy to do, uh, we can actually calculate what the speed of that initial object was. Um, that's kind of cool. Uh, that's why it's called a ballistic pendulum, because just by measuring the angle of the pendulum, we can calculate some ballistic quantity, in this case, the, the initial speed. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do is... Uh, conserve momentum. So uh, in the system, the initial momentum is just all bullet. So again, we have PI equals PF, right? So the initial momentum is just going to be M uh, times V. And the final momentum, just right after the collision, uh, well, the bullet is going to embed itself in the big mass. So this is sort of like the example we did before where the two masses stick together. So this is going to be M plus big M uh, times, I don't know, I'm just going to call it big V. Uh, it, it'll look confusing, but we'll substitute pretty quick and get rid of it. Uh, okay, so uh, that's the momentum after, just immediately after the collision. So what that means is, I can solve for the speed of the big mass after the little bullet embeds itself inside. And so this is just going to be uh, little m divided by little m plus big M uh, times little v, the speed of the bullet. All right. So now what are we going to do? Well, now we invoke a principle that hopefully you've seen before, which is conservation of energy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, as this pendulum is swinging, uh, it had an initial speed at the bottom, this big V, and then as it swung upwards, uh, it's going to stop at some angle. And the reason it's going to stop is because it's gone up to some height h, right? So what we're saying is, one half big M, oops, it's the total mass, isn't it? So it's one half of this total mass times that speed, the big speed, uh, the, the big V speed squared. That's the initial kinetic energy, and then it gets used up as potential. And so this is going to be equal to uh, little m plus big M times G times H height. Okay, um, what's that height going to be? Let's write it in terms of angle, because the angle is the thing that's actually going to be convenient to measure. So let's see. Um, I mean, this is, the string's length never changes, so both of those times the string's length is L. But what I want is that height H. So imagine drawing a little triangle over uh, where the bottom down here is H. So... Uh, it looks like this much, this is going to be confusing if I leave that there, this much here, how much is that? That looks like that's going to be um, L cosine theta, right? That's that amount. This is going to be L cosine theta. And so H, the amount at the bottom, H is just going to be the total length, L, minus... Uh, that uh, vertical bit, L cosine theta. Or maybe I'll just write it as L times 1 minus cosine theta. Okay. So now I have it written in terms of theta, which is nice. Um, so now I can also take this V, because I'm trying to find the little V of the bullet, right? So I can take this V, bloop, and plug it right in there. So I get something that's kind of a mess, but we'll... Simplify it. So let's see, I'm going to get uh, one half, little m plus big M, and now V squared. Okay, so this is going to be uh, little m over little m plus big M quantity squared. There we go, times V squared, little V squared. 
Um, this is going to be little m plus big M G times, oops, uh, L one minus cos and theta. Okay, kind of a mess, but at least that and that, those, uh, uh, sums of masses, those two are going to cancel out at least. Um, but I can go ahead and solve for V if I want right now. Uh, let's do that. So V is going to be equal to, uh, let's see. Um, it's going to be, a. if I push this, uh, I'm going to move the two over to the other side. So it's going to be a, uh, M plus big M over little M. Uh, times the square root of, looks like 2GL1 minus cos and theta. There we go. Um, and that's pretty much it. So we've solved it in general. Um, let's go ahead and plug in some numbers just to see what this might turn out to be. Let's suppose uh, if little m is. I don't know, 10 grams, that's sort of a bullet sort of a mass, right? And big M, just to keep it simple, let's say it's one kilogram you're firing the thing into. So the ratio of those is about 100. Um, let's see, G is 10, right? Uh, acceleration due to gravity. Um, let's keep the number easy. L, let's just say it's one meter, just so we can see if this looks reasonable. And theta, let's suppose we measure theta. This thing swings up to an angle of 30 degrees, let's say. Well, when you plug in all those numbers, what you're going to get believe it or not, is 165 meters per second. So for some reasonable sounding values, you're going to get something that's a reasonable uh, sounding bullet mass, 165 meters per second. Um, and so uh, this looks like um, it's giving reasonable answers. So this is how you would solve the ballistic pendulum in general. Notice that this is kind of a neat example because we did two different conservation of energy uh, principles. We conserve momentum um, completely inelastically, right? When they, uh, uh, when the, when the little bullet embedded itself in the big mass, that's completely inelastic collision. Uh, and then after that, we conserved energy to find out um, uh, something about the initial speed and the final height. Uh, so that's a neat way to combine two different principles together um, to solve an interesting problem.